Hey kids, let's do more math videos. <laughs> Where's there's the top? Today. We're going to solve rational inequalities. similarities between these guys and quadratic inequalities. Remember those quadratic inequalities, you want to find those critical values. You create intervals to your test. You should work in phobia right now. I just sound like a teacher I used to have back in high school, really. <laughs> Not even joking. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Except it wasn't like that high pitch, she was just whining, really, really whining. <laughs> Wait, so you're telling me that my sons used to teach you? <laughs> no. With rational inequalities, you want to rewrite so that zero <coughs> is on one side of the inequality. <coughs> rewrite so that zero is, one side of, is on one side of the inequality and create a single fraction on the other side. I did hit the record button, right? Okay. Sure? No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure anymore. Did you get rid of the videos from last night? There's no light or anything that don't do that. Wow. On on other setups with the same document camera, it would actually say recording on the screen. Doesn't it unplug or something? <laughs> Once you have a single fraction and, a single, and you have zero on the other side, um, this is how you find the critical values. Those critical values, what was the nickname we called those critical values? Remember what we called those guys? Gateway, we called them gatekeepers, gatekeepers right? Because zero is that main gatekeeper that keeps order between negatives and positives. So the critical values are those values that make that make either the numerator or denominator equal zero. They make either the numerator or denominator <coughs> equal zero. See, when we had something that was quadratic, you would just set it equal to zero, find what made it equal to zero, and you were good. But now that I'm talking about having a fraction here, I have to worry about what would make the numerator zero and what would make the denominator zero because those guys would be the gatekeepers. But why what not just common, find a common denominator, multiply, and get rid of the fraction entirely? Why can we not just get a common denominator and multiply both sides by that and get rid of the denominator? We'll get rid that's, of the no, that's, th you know, that is a very good question. However, when we have these rational inequalities, we're going to have variables in the denominator, right? So that means the LCD will include something that's based <coughs> on a variable, right? And if you multiply both sides of an inequality, you have to make sure that you have to make sure about the sign. If you multiply both sides by a positive, you're cool. What if you multiply both sides by a negative? You change the inequality. But when you multiply both sides times a variable expression, you don't know if that's positive or negative. If I have the expression x plus 2, is x plus 2 positive or negative? Depends on x. It depends on what x is. So that's why we can't just so because clear. Because it's in an any, in, in inequality, that's the reason you can't. Because you right. don't know what the variable is. You don't know if the, if the variable in that expression is going to make the whole thing positive or negative, so you don't know if the inequality symbol flips or not. That's a good question. I'm glad you brought that up. And then we're going to use uh, those test values, whoops, test values to check each interval. Now, I'm really not going to do this. I'm going to do what we did yesterday, and that is going to be doing that sign analysis. Make a little sign table and everything's going to be a little bit easier for us. Now, I'm going to start off with an example that's already laid out very nicely for us. 
If I take the inequality x plus 3 divided by 2x minus 1 is greater than 0. Okay. Now, notice that step 1 is already done. I have 0 on one side of the inequality, and I have a single fraction on the left side. So since I have that, step one is done. I move on to step two. I want to find those critical values. Okay. Those critical values are what make the numerator or denominator zero. So what are those critical values? Uh, Whoop. Three. So from the, if you look at the numerator, x equals negative three is a critical value. What about the denominator? One half. One half. So that's how I'm going <coughs> to separate my number line. That's how I'm going to create my intervals. But zero is, don't you have to use zero as? Okay, I'm so bad at Don't you have to use something that, that would make it zero? Right. Zero. If I plug in negative three in the numerator, that numerator becomes zero. I understand that, but, but, but inadvertently isn't zero one of, the, one of the variables? If I plug in zero here, no, I'm going to get negative three. 0, and when x equals 0, it's not a gatekeeper for us. Because okay, so it doesn't make the numerator or the denominator equal to 0. Okay, gotcha. Now, remember what we did yesterday when we did the sign analysis. We took our factors and we wrote them down the left side, <coughs> like this. And then I'm going to write my expression here, which is x plus 3 over 2x minus 1. I have two critical values, and those critical values are happening here at negative 3 and at 1 half. Do you all agree? <coughs> now it's time for us to do the analysis on the sign. So you can plug in numbers, and I have no problem with that. If you want to pick a number that's in this section, this interval that's less than negative 3, plug it into the original expression and see whether or not it's true or just get the sign, you can do that. But that's not what I want to do, because I have an easier way. x plus 3, what's his critical <coughs> value? Negative 3. Negative 3. So at right here is when he's 0, right? And remember what I told you yesterday. If this coefficient for x is positive, what values do you have on the left side of this? Negative. You're negative on the left. And what are you on the right? How do we know if the coefficient is positive? Because it's a 1. Oh, okay. 1 is positive. We're not like, thinking of what x is. Right, you're looking at the coefficient of the x term. So I just want to apply it for the next one. Well, let's look at the next guy. Oh, okay, when I was does thinking that it was like the negative 3 that you were referring to. But no, 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 no. It. It's the coefficient. Because <coughs> think about, what does x plus 3 look like if you were to graph it? If you graphed x plus 3, it's linear, right? Mm -hmm. And you see that greater than negative 3, here's negative 3 on the graph. Greater than negative 3, you're positive. Less than negative 3, you're negative, because it has that positive <coughs> slope. Remember that from days gone by? Now, 2x minus 1, his critical value happens here at 1 half. Since he has a positive coefficient, his graph would be increasing, which means if you're increasing, you're coming from <coughs> negative values, and you're going to positive values. Do you all agree? <coughs> Bless you. Now. All we have left to do here is look at, we, we looked at the individual factors, look at it all together in its complete expression. So what's a negative divided by a negative? <coughs> it's positive. Now be very careful about this, these next few parts. What's zero divided by any negative number? It's zero. <coughs> what's positive divided by negative? Negative what's positive divided by zero? It's undefined and not zero. Now, we're going to make a notation here. We're going to say this is undefined. We're just going to write UND, undefined. And that's very important to us because of how the some of these inequalities work. What about positive divided by positive? Positive. Positive. Now, look back at your original inequality. What kind of values did I want to have here, positives or negatives? Positive. I wanted positive, so that means I'm looking for those sections right there. Now, do I, get to do I get to include these endpoints here? Why not? It's not equal to. It's greater than, but not equal to. So when I go to my interval notation, what will you write? How do you write the left part? 
from negative infinity to negative three parentheses. The symbol, not the letter. And then what? <coughs> Open parentheses, one half. To infinity. Okay. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Can we check this on a graphing calculator? <coughs> Remember how we can check this? So, the, I did this in the, my math lab and I struggled with it. I ended up getting through it, but um, so the only reason to do the bracket with the sign or equal to yes is still it's still the same as solving it before as an equation an inequality as an equation correct if no we, we, we there would be would we be bracketing that negative three yeah, yes yes okay. if, if this were equal to okay then we, then we would be equal to zero, so we could bracket this guy. However, undefined could never have a bracket. So since you're undefined at one half, you can never include that, so that would have to be parentheses. But if this were equal to, you could bracket that negative three. Zero. Yes. Because if you had to be greater than or equal <coughs> to zero, since you're equal to zero, you can include that. This guy's undefined, you could not include that. Uh, let's check on the graphing calculator. Make sure you type this correctly. Parentheses x plus 3 <coughs> divided by the other, by the, by the denominator, 2x minus 1. And we want to see is this greater than 0. Now look at your window. We got this from negative 10 to 10. And the y minus from 0 to 2. So we know that that's set up great for us to use the, uh, to graph logic. Now, it may be kind of difficult to see, but you stopped right here at negative 3, and you picked back up at positive 1 half, which matches up with what, what I have you here. For your window? My window, I just have the normal x from negative 10 to 10. If, but if you're graphing with logic, if you're graphing with those inequalities, mm -hmm. your options for graphing will either be 0 or 1 for the output value. Yeah. So I just have the y min to be 0 and the y max to be 2. That way you see the solution show up right here in the middle. <coughs>